We have studied transformer in the previous lecture. In this lecture, you will learn BERT, bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. It is for pre-training the transformer models. In this lecture, I introduce only the high-level ideas of BERT without diving into the very details. You need to read the original paper to understand the technical details. BERT was released in 2018 and officially published in 2019. BERT is for pre-training transformers encoder network. BERT substantially improves the performance of transformer. How does BERT pre-train transformer? BERT is based on two ideas. First, randomly mask one or multiple words in a sentence, and ask transformer to predict the masked word. Second, show two sentences to transformer, and ask whether the second sentence is the real next sentence. You will learn the two ideas one by one. The first task is to predict masked words. Let's revisit transformer's encoder network. The input is a sequence of words, for example, the cat set on the mat. The embedding layer represents every word using a numeric vector x. The embedding is 1 to 1. For example, cat is mapped to vector x2. Vector x2 depends only on cat and nothing else. Then the transformer's encoder network outputs a sequence of vectors, u1 to u6. The encoder network is made of many blocks. Each block has a self-attention layer and a dense layer. The length of the output sequence is the same as the input sequence. If the input sentence has 6 words, then the output sequence has 6 vectors. Note that an output vector ui is not only a function of the ith word, but also all the input words. For example, u2 depends on the entire input sentence, rather than depending on only the second word. A change of any one of the six words will make vector u2 different. The first task of BERT is to predict a masked word in the input sentence. For example, BERT is asked such a question. The second word in the sentence is masked. Then what is the second word? Based on the context, transformer's encoder network should be able to tell that the word is cat. Each time, BERT randomly masks one word or multiple words in a sentence. A word is replaced by the mask token. In the original paper, they randomly mask 15% of the input words. Vector XM is the embedding of the mask token. The output in the masked position is vector UM. While UM is at the masked position, it is computed based on the entire input sentence. The context is captured by UM. We can therefore use UM for predicting the masked word. Feed vector UM into a softmax classifier. It performs multi-class classification. The number of classes is the vocabulary size. If the dictionary has 10,000 words, then the number of classes is 10,000. We know that the masked word is cat, so we hope the prediction made by the softmax classifier is cat. Let E be the one-hot vector of the masked word cat. Vector P is the output probability distribution over the dictionary words. If the dictionary has 10,000 words, then vectors E and P are 10,000 dimensional. Ideally, we hope vector P is equal to vector E, which means the softmax classifier has 100% confidence that the masked word is cat. We use the cross entropy of E and P as the loss function. It matters how different the prediction is from the ground truth word cat. If vectors E and P are close to each other, then the cross entropy loss is small. We can perform one gradient descent to update the model parameters. In this way, 
we encourage the cross entropy loss to decrease, equivalently making the classification close to CAT. We have studied the first task, predicting master words. The second task is to predict the next sentence. You are given this sentence. Calculus is a branch of math. Then you are given another sentence. It was developed by Newton and Leibniz. Do you think this is the next sentence? Probably yes. I'm not sure, but it looks very like the next sentence. What if you are given this sentence? Panda is native to South Central China. Do you think this is the next sentence? Obviously not. The first sentence talks about calculus. The second sentence abruptly jumps to Panda. If we train a language model, it should be able to perform such binary classification. We concatenate two sentences. Calculus is a branch of math, and it was developed by Newton and Leibniz. We use a token CLS for classification. I will explain it later on. We use a token SEP for separating sentences. We just place the tokens here. The embedding layer will convert each token to a vector. The vectors will be automatically learned. We know the second sentence is the real next sentence. So we set its target to true. We hope the classification output is true. During training, 50% of the training samples are actual consecutive sentences. With 50% chance, the second sentence is randomly selected from the entire dataset, and the target is set to false. In this example, the first sentence is calculus is a branch of math. The second sentence, panda is native to South Central China, is randomly sampled from the dataset. The two sentences are not actually consecutive. The second sentence is fake, and we hope the classification output is false. This is the input sequence. It contains two sentences. They are separated by the SAP token. The first token, CLS, means classification. I will soon explain how it is used. The input sequence is fed into an embedding layer and then the transformer's encoder network. The output is a sequence of vectors. Each vector is in the position of an input token, such as a word, CLS, or SAP. For example, vector UM is in the position of the last word of the first sentence. Another example, vector C is in the position of the token, CLS. Vector C will be used for binary classification, that is to tell if the second sentence is the real next sentence. Note that transformer's encoder network is a many-to-many -many model. While vector C is in the position of CLS, vector C depends on the entire input sequence. Vector C has the full knowledge of the two sentences. Therefore, based on vector C, a binary classifier can tell whether the second sentence is the real next sentence. A binary classifier takes vector C as an input feature vector and makes a binary prediction f. f is a scalar between 0 and 1. 0 means the second sentence is not the next sentence, and 1 means it is the real next sentence. We can use cross-entropy loss to measure the difference between the prediction f and the target. We encourage f to approach the target by minimizing the loss. With the loss at hand, we can use backpropagation to compute gradients. Then we use gradients to update the parameters of the encoder network and the embedding layer. In this way, the model will be increasingly capable of measuring the correlation between any pair of sentences. A question, how can this task help train a language model? On the one hand, 
the task is useful for improving the embedding layer. Embedding layer maps words to vectors. If two words are semantically related, then their vectors should have some correlation. For example, Newton and calculus are closely correlated. The correlation should be reflected by the embedding. Otherwise, the model would be unable to tell if the two sentences are neighboring. On the other hand, the task is also useful for improving the attentions in transformer. The functionality of attention is to measure how well two vectors are aligned. The attention layers must learn to detect that Newton and calculus are well aligned. Otherwise, the classifier cannot tell whether the two sentences are neighboring. In sum, the binary classification task is helpful to both embedding and attention. We have discussed two tasks for pre-training transformer. First, predict the master words. Second, decide if two sentences are actually neighbors. Next, let's combine the two tasks. We organize two sentences in the same way. The CLS token, the first sentence, the SEP token, and the second sentence. In addition, 15% of the words are randomly masked. In this example, two randomly selected words are masked. The first task is to make a binary classification. The model seeks to tell whether the second sentence is the next sentence. In this example, the two sentences are actually neighboring in the original context. So we set the first target to true. The first masked word is branch. We set the second target to branch. The second masked word is was. We set the third target to was. In this example, the second sentence is Panda is native to mask central China. It is not the real next sentence. So the first target is set to false. The masked word is south. So we set the second target to south. Suppose two words are masked. Then we have three tasks. One task is binary classification, and the other two tasks are predicting the two masked words. We need three loss functions. The first is for binary classification, which is to decide whether the second sentence is the real next sentence. The second and the third loss functions are for multi-class classification, that is to predict the two masked words. Each loss function corresponds to a word. The objective function is the sum of the three loss functions. We compute the gradient of the objective function with respect to the model parameters using backpropagation. The model parameters are then updated by performing a gradient descent. BERT does not need manually labeled data. This is a huge advantage. Traditionally, high-quality data, for example, the translation from English to German, are expensive to prepare. It may cost over a million dollars to hire humans to build a large-scale and high-quality data set. In contrast, BERT can use all the existing books and web documents as training data. For example, BERT can be trained on English Wikipedia, which contains 2.5 billion words. The labels are automatically generated. BERT randomly masks 15% of words and uses the master words as labels. BERT predicts if the second sentence is the real next sentence. Real and fake each has 50% probability. BERT is based on a simple and brilliant idea and it works very well. The only downside is a huge amount of computation. The published BERT paper built two models. BERT base is a relatively smaller model. It has 110 million parameters. It was trained using 16 TPUs for four days. If you do it using cloud service, it will cost you around $10,000. This is just for one set of hyperparameters. 
hyperparameter tuning time is not counted. BERT large is even bigger. It has over 200 million parameters. It was trained using 64 TPUs for 4 days. The cost is 3 times higher than BERT base. Fortunately, the BERT models and the pre-trained parameters are available online. This means you don't have to train BERT from scratch. If you want to use the pre-trained models, you can simply download them. In this lecture, I introduced only the high-level ideas of BERT. I didn't go to the technical details. There are lots of tricks in embedding and random masking. You can refer to the original paper for the technical details. Thank you for watching this video. The link to my slides are below the video.